Here I am, I'm back at my air handler in my garage, and I'm showing off my new field piece STA2, and it's a, a induct hot wire anometer. I've already made one hole right here in my supply duct, and I've covered the hole with a little piece of cork so that I can put the probe in there anytime I need to. And it keeps the uh, air from leaking. Alright, it's best to find the center of the duct which in this case is going to be not where the 9 is at 9 inches. Alright, that would be right about there. Alright, I found that using this half inch copper tubing to cut into the duck board is probably about the best size. So what we'll do is I'll take this piece of copper tubing, it's half inch, and I'm going to use it as sort of like a little drill bit in a sense by slowly making a hole that will be round, but I'm not going to really push hard, I'm kind of turning it so that it cuts into the duct rather than pushes it out. So that this sensor right here, this probe can slide right into the hole really nice. Okay, Now I've found that even though this cone shaped uh, item comes with it, uh, you really it's really best to hold it into position to make sure that it's uh, kind of center and everything rather than just let it dangle. Right now I have the probe inserted in the supply duct. Here it is. It's, can, it can read temperature and uh, CFMs and FPM and all the metric scale uh, measurements as well. Okay, right now I'm going to turn on the STA2 by pressing the button for about two seconds. And it's booting up right now. Kind of countdown going on there. Okay, I'll try to uh, keep from going into hyperdrive here to and uh, go nice and slow to show you the features on this. First of all, it has a backlight that is real handy, um, and. Uh, Let's see, now to get started here, what we can do is we'll, we'll first enter the, the duct size that we have this uh, inserted into, and we hit enter, and then you'll see where it says duct, and you'll have a square, or if it's not square duct, then you can toggle the up or down arrow so that you can it'll come up for round duct and in this case I've opted to go with the square duct uh, sizing and uh, then you can hit enter again and what I have here is 15 inch duct and actually so I have 15 inches of duct meaning a 15 by 15 square uh, after you subtract the wall thickness of the duckboard which is inch and a half all the way around and so, so instead of having 18 inches from here to here right we'll have 15 inches so, okay, now 15 
is going to be uh, the um, the height and then I'll hit enter and then they want to know the width that's 15 as well and okay, now um, at, you can see here it'll, it'll read out say CFM's right here okay and uh, feet per minute meaning you know FPM down here in the bottom and to change that around you can toggle the up and down arrows around like here oops turned off my backlight and like here now you got CFM's and the temperature in Fahrenheit of course you can you can change this so it'll uh, read Celsius and I'll hit the button again and here's for uh, feet per minute and the temperature so for all practical purposes in this case I'm gonna keep it here to uh, CFM's and temperature okay now you can see the CFM's just bouncing around like you don't know what to think now, the way you really are best to read this is by averaging so you'll press the average button down until the screen changes and then you'll hit the enter button once and now you see the zero 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 that's the clock so you press the clock again meaning the enter key and the clock begins now then uh, to find the average you press average and you see let me turn the light back on on this now it's averaging the total amount of feet per minute and I can toggle this up and down arrow of course to switch it to other things like Fahrenheit here we go CFMs so right now I've got 1060 or so amount of CFMs on average and it's um, really a great way to check a lot of different things like your uh, duct for leaks and things so okay so my supply has 1000 well remember we're going to say 1060 we'll just say that um, because trying to get it exact as you can see is just not going to happen now we'll uh, turn off the averaging and then we'll reset the clock by pressing and holding this uh, max and min, min you know max and minimum button down here you see that resets the clock uh, now <clears throat> I can move my probe to a different location in this case I'll move it down here to a hole that I made in the return. Here we go. And it should hold her. All right, now I have to, let's see, hit the enter button. Begin the clock again. And I'll hit the hold or averaging button. So it'll begin to average the reading. See where she goes. All right. After letting it uh, average for about a minute or so, it'll it's coming up with kind of close to where my supply was. I think. Say we're doing pretty good here at uh, 1,025, 1,030, something like that. Here we go, 140. Kind of have to just pick up the law of averages and you know look for leaks if it's grossly off. And if you're wanting to know what to do with the holes that you make uh, in your duct, uh, well, you could, of course, you could tape over them. But uh, in case if I want to get back in there again to check the duct again, I could. I just put a piece of cork in there and uh, 
And if you want to put a little piece of tape over it on top of that too, that's fine. But this way I can just pull the cork back out when I need to and, and put the probe back in there for more testing. Now you're supposed to make sure that you have a minimum of three feet from say your supply end of your air handler up your plenum and to where you're going to make your hole. You should have at least three feet. Okay. Now, if you have, now right here on this side, I made another hole. Uh, it didn't really work out very well. I, I had a 90 up in the ceiling or, you know, in, in the attic there uh, that was interfering with getting a, an accurate reading. So I decided to uh, come down here, right here where I'm less liable to get much interference from any kind of uh, 90s or anything. Um, and I was able to get a, an accurate reading that way even though the air has to turn here and then go up into the air handler but uh, yeah I was able to get a really accurate reading that way. Another factor that could easily throw off your readings is how deep your probe is into the duct. Um, it, it really does matter big time. I mean if you just kind of play around with uh, inserting this into your duct, it, you'll get all kind of weird readings at different depths and it kind of gives you like a scale right here for square duct and another one here for round duct. By the way, you really don't want to poke holes in flex because if you do that you're going to have a problem with the with your duct. You're going to have a major leak in there. So uh, it's only really made so that you can put holes we'll say like here in duct board or of course in metal duct. Uh, that when they say round duct right here okay they don't really mean round flex you do not want to start poking holes in your flex duct because if you do you're going to have some leaks. Round sheet metal duct is fine, okay, but not flex duct. So here it is in this really nice case. It comes in a really nice plastic and padded uh, case. Everything's very well secured. Um, Here's the uh, owner's manual. And here's a little Velcro uh, thing here that you could use to wrap up your wire with if you wanted to. Make it a little shorter or whatever you need to for the probe. Um, and of course it comes with the anometer itself and this little holding cone which I'll explain here in a minute. The probe here has a little plastic uh, protective sleeve that goes over the, the sensors. And there's the sensors right in there. The probe has these lasered etched like a measuring ruler here so that you can figure out how deep to put your probe it's going to be important to get try to get it in the middle of the duct wherever you can. Here's the owner's manual. I mean, what can you say about it? It's uh, an owner's manual. Uh, you can download the PDF file from FieldPiece website. Just go to FieldPiece.com and locate the STA2 product, and you'll be able to download the PDF file. In my humble opinion, the instructions really uh, need to explain further about the many features of the product. 
which they are a bit vague on pretty much the entire product. Overall, I do feel that the STA2 is a very handy product. And just play around with it. And you definitely want to play around with it before you, say, take it to the job site. Because, I mean, if you have to try and thumb through everything, then you're going to look like an, an idiot probably to your customers. But it can be an extremely handy tool to show your customers that they may have duct leaks and need some work done. Determine whether you have to climb around the attic or whatnot, or basement, wherever the duct is. But if you have any questions, you can always contact me or uh, the uh, or, or field piece, and they'll be happy to kind of walk you through anything that you really need to know about the product.